Welcome back to the channel. We have a premium grade barrel to look at today. It's a 17 inch Novesti Rival V2 barrel that was generously loaned to the channel by an anonymous subscriber. We will get started by going over the barrel specs and current condition. Next, I'll do some gauging, take a look through the bore scope, and then do some comparisons. And after that, we will head to the range to shoot some 30 shot groups to get an idea how this barrel will perform in a match or other practical type setting. Here we go. The barrel was bought in July of 2024 during a one day flash sale that Novesti had going on at the time and it was loaned to me in new unfired condition. The literature included with the barrel states that the barrel should be cleaned prior to use and no extended break-in procedure is necessary. So I don't have to worry about breaking this thing in, which is nice. The barrel is made from 416R stainless steel and has an individualized serial number for QC purposes. The barrel is on the heavier side of the spectrum with a weight listed at 36 and a quarter ounces, which is just a little bit different than what I measured this one at. The Rival V2 has a 1 to 7 twist rate with 5 groove flick and rifling with improved geometry to help the brush track properly when cleaning. The barrel has an intermediate length gas system and comes with the appropriate length gas tube since intermediate gas isn't too common. A Noveski marked superlative arms adjustable gas block that is drilled for a cross pin is included with the package along with the appropriately sized cross pin. The gas port is drilled on the largest size at 0.089 inches. However, since the barrel was designed to be used with an adjustable gas block, I think this makes sense. The barrel has a beautifully cut 60 degree muzzle crown and standard size half by 28 threads. The barrel is also fluted forward of the gas block to reduce front end weight, which can help with better weight balancing. The outside of the barrel has a bead blasted finish, which provides a nice consistent matte look that I think looks really nice. An M4 barrel extension with extended hand polished feed ramps is fitted to the barrel. And last, Noveski has a proprietary match chamber that is hand polished, which we'll take a closer look at here in a minute. All right, time for the bench inspection. We're gonna start out by cleaning and zeroing the micrometer. First, we will measure the barrel extension. The minimum size of the bore in the upper receiver is right at one inch. So most people would probably want their barrel extension to be close to that as possible without going over. And here's what I got with the Noveski. To put that into context, I made a chart with the other barrels that I measured so far and you can see where the Noveski stacks up. I also have the TDP specs listed on there as well for comparison. So it looks like pretty much everyone is making oversized barrel extension nowadays. Anyway, moving on to the gas block journal. Most people would probably want this measurement to be as close as possible to 750 thousandths without going over to make the seal with the gas block as tight as possible. And you can see what I'm getting with this barrel. And again, here's the chart with all the other barrels that I've measured thus far. So the Noveski is looking pretty good here. Okay, next up we're gonna get into some gauging. First, I'll use the throat erosion gauge to see where this barrel is starting out at. And it looks to measure right at about a one on this gauge. Next up, we have a chamber function gauge. So the gauge is made for a two to three wild chamber and Noveski has a proprietary chamber. I believe the main difference with the Noveski chamber is that the throat is longer than a two to three wild, but shorter than a five by six NATO chamber. But I'm not positive about that, so feel free to correct me in the comments. Anyway, the barrel passes with the 2 to 3 wild gauge as I would expect it to. Next, we have a headspace go gauge and the barrel passes with this bolt. And last is a no-go gauge, which this bolt will not close on, which is good. Next up, we're going to take a look with the bore scope. Here's the throat, which looks to be very well cut. Everything looks nice, clean, and consistent. There was a small speck of rust or something in there, but uh, don't worry about that. It was cleaned up before shooting. And here we are a little further down the bore, where you can get a good look at the polygonal rifling. And everything looks to be well formed here. I don't see any blemishes or anything re even remotely concerning. Coming up to the gas port, this looks to be a very clean cut hole with no burrs. Again, like everything else in the bore so far, it looks very, very good. And here we are at the crown, which again, looks great. No blemishes, everything, everything looks nice and consistent. Very well done. And here's a quick look at the crown and the threads from outside. The end of the threads have a nice chamfer to it, which is nice to see. And again, the crown looks great from this angle as well. Next up, we're going to take a look at this hand polished chamber. Here's a straight view of the chamber. You can't really get a great view of what's going on in here, but you can kind of see some scratches on the chamber wall. But other than that, I don't really see any obvious defects here. And switching to a 90 degree mirror, we can get a better look at what's going on here. So to me, this is not the service finish that I would expect from a hand polished chamber. They certainly did something to the chamber, but it looks more like cross hatching that you would see on an automotive engine cylinder wall and not a hand polished surface. For comparison, here's the chamber from a PSA barrel that I cleaned up with some JV board compound. And while the PSA chamber isn't flawless, to me it looks a lot smoother than the Noveski. So yeah, this is certainly a bit disappointing to see on a barrel that claims to have a hand polished chamber. Next on the list is the barrel extension. The feed ramps are also advertised as being hand polished. 
And here's a closer look at the machining on the back face of the barrel extension, which doesn't look that good. In all honesty, part of this is due to the high gloss black finish. It's really easy to see any sort of flaws in a high gloss black and direct sunlight. But even then, these groups are deep enough that I can feel them. Also, here's a comparison with a Roscoe barrel that also has a black finish. And you can see that things are much smoother on the Roscoe barrel extension. But even then, these surfaces don't really matter a whole lot since they don't really interface with much. The surfaces that I would be most concerned about would be the back portion of the lugs that interfaces with the bolt lugs. So let's take a look. This is a pretty tough angle to get. I fed the borescope end from the muzzle end to get a look at this side of the barrel extension lugs. And the machining looks to be about the same on this side as it was on the other side, which is pretty rough. And again, here's a comparison with the Roscoe barrel, which has a similar finish as the Noveski. And here's another comparison with a Geisley barrel. Now, part of the reason why the Geisley surface looks so smooth is because of the manganese phosphate finish that they use. It has a matte finish that doesn't really reflect much light, which makes it harder to see defects. But even then, it's a pretty stark comparison between these two. The gas tube passed the MBC gas tube gauge, and the other end mic'd out just fine as well. The gas tube hole on the gas block is also properly sized, making for a tight fit between the two. And the cross pin for the gas block was machined more precisely than my gauge pins are. Okay, that's enough of that for now. Next up, we'll go over the shooting setup and controls, and then head to the range. The barrel was fit into an up receiver. After greasing the threads, the barrel nut was torqued to 40 foot-pounds. The barrel was cleaned prior to this range trip per the manufacturer's instructions. A free float handguard was used. No muzzle device was attached to prevent possible interference. A 3-inch bag rider with short mounting screws is used to fit the front rest. An A5 receiver extension is installed with an A5-0 buffer and spring coat green spring. The adjustable gas block was set to setting 15 with setting 18 being fully open. The trigger is a Geisley two-stage super dynamic three-gun trigger. A few rounds were fired prior to shooting the first group to foul the bore and zero the scope. The scope is a Vortex Viper 6.5 to 20 by 44. Scope ring torque was confirmed at 15 inch-pounds. Magnification is set at 20, and parallax was set and confirmed with a head nod test. I'll be using two chronographs today. The first is an optical chronograph, the Pro Chrono DLX, which will be placed 30 feet from the muzzle to avoid interfering with the second chronograph, which is the Garmin Zero C1 Pro, which was generously provided to the channel by the fine people at the Ballistic X app. So check out their Instagram and consider giving their app a try. A Mantis x -Gen Elite is mounted to the front of the handguard. This is an accelerometer that will grade each shot based on how steady the rifle was at the moment of firing. And the groups will be measured by the Ballistic X app. I'll be shooting 30 shots per group. All 30 shots will be fired consecutively over a period of about 4 minutes. This will help me to determine how well this barrel will perform with any match or practical type setting where the barrel may get some heat into it. The barrel will be cooled with a chamber chiller and leaf blower between each group to make the comparison between different ammo types as even as possible. All groups will be fired at 100 yards. The point of aim is a small circle at the bottom of the target, with the point of impact set a few inches above to preserve the aiming point. The rifle will be shot from the prone with a front rest and rear bag. Wind will be monitored with a ribbon. Each group will take about 4 minutes to shoot, and will be edited down to about 15 seconds. I'll be shooting in 3 different groups. First will be Winchester 62 grain M855 green tip. Next, I'll be shooting Federal Gold Metal 73 grain Burger open tip match. And last, I'll finish up with 77 grain IMI razor core. Alright, let's do it. Okay, starting off with the M855 green tip. The gun felt a little bit overgassed. The ejection powder didn't look too bad though. Obviously the barrel comes with an adjustable gas block, so I could have adjusted it, but I chose to leave it as is. Anyway, the shooting felt fine on my end with this group. Basically no wind, and both chronographs rec recorded all the shots. So, we will finish up with this group and then take a closer look. Okay, before we get into it, the DLX chronograph was placed 30 feet from the muzzle, so I correct the velocities from that chronograph to show the muzzle velocities instead of the velocity at 30 feet. The chronographs still don't agree 100% and they never will because there's always going to be some margin of error. But the main thing I look for is to see if there's any significant outliers between the two chronos. And with this data set, the biggest difference was in shot number 28, which had a difference of 15 feet per second. Anyway, the average velocities for this load were 29.01 and 29.10 with SDs of 26 and 25. So the two chronos largely agree with one another. The average rifle stability score was 99.6, which is uh, about where I shoot. And we ended up with a group size of 2.850 MOA with a mean radius of 0.904 MOA. And this group ended up being a little bit taller than it is wide, but nothing really looks too out of place. The low scores, according to the Mantis, were uh, 99.1. Uh, we had three scores on those, but that's not, uh, not low enough that I'm really concerned about it. And there really wasn't anything funky going on with the velocities. So we'll go ahead and jump to the 5 and 10 shot group breakdowns. 
And here is the 30 shot group broken down into six five shot groups and three 10 shot groups. So with the uh, five shot groups, we had a, a five shot group best of 1.4 MOA with an average five shot group size of 2.0 MOA. And if we break the 30 shot group into three 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 1.7 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 2.4 MOA. And with that, we'll head to the next group. Okay, moving on to the federal load with burger bullets. The ejection pattern didn't look horrible. It started out at 3 o'clock and moved up to about 2.30. Again, the gas block was left at setting 15 of 18. The gun did feel a little bit overgassed like it did with the M855, but the shooting felt fine on my end, and not a whole lot else to report. Wind was minimal. All the electronics picked up every shot, and that's about it. So, we will finish up and then take a closer look. Okay, there were no major disagreements between the two chronographs, so we'll just go over the Garmin data to keep things moving along. We had an average velocity of 2540 with a standard deviation of 20 and an extreme spread of 86. The average rifle stability score was 99.5, which is about my average. And we ended up with a group size of 2.913 MOA with a mean radius of 0.807 MOA. And the group looks fairly circular with the exception of shot number 5, so we'll look at that, uh, look at that guy real quick. The velocity was slightly below average, and the rifle stability score was 99.1, which is a little bit below average. So, uh, not sure what happened there, but it's over there. And then my least stable shot was shot number four at 98.9, which ended up at the uh, the top of the group over here. And then the lowest velocity shot was shot number 10, which ended up right here. And the highest velocity shot was shot number eight, which ended up up, up here. And then here are the five and 10 shot group breakdowns. So if you break the 30 shot group down into six five shot groups, the best 5-shot group was 1.5 MOA, with an average 5-shot group size of 1.8 MOA. And if, you break the and if you break the group down into 10-shot groups, the best 10-shot group was 1.8 MOA, with an average 10-shot group size of 2.3 MOA. And next up, we have the IMI Razor Core. Alright, last group of the day with the IMI 77 grain Razor Core. Ejection looked good at 3 o'clock to 3.30. All the shots felt fine on my end. Wind was a bit more active than the other groups, but still not much. Both of the Chronos recorded all the shots, and the Mantis detected all the shots as well. So, we will finish up with the group, and then take a closer look. Okay, so no uh, significant agreement or disagreements between the two Chronos again, so we'll just go over the uh, numbers from the Garmin. We had an average velocity of 26.53, with a pretty good standard deviation of 21 and extreme spread of 101. And just as a quick note, the velocity was over 100 feet per second faster than the lighter federal load. So the IMI Razor Core is loaded pretty hot. There were a few pieces of brass that did have a light ejector swipe mark on them. So the pressure seems to be on the higher end of things, but nothing I'm overly concerned with. Anyway, getting back to the group, we had a group size of 2.341 MOA with a mean radius of 0.598 MOA. And the group was looking pretty decent until the end there which shots number 25, 27, and 28. So we'll take a look at those real quick. Shot number 25 had the highest velocity of the group, and then the rifle stability score was 99.4, which is fine. And then there was shot number 27, which had a velocity that was below average, and then the rifle stability score was 99.9. And then there's shot number 28, which had a velocity that was below average, and then a rifle stability score 99.3. And then if we break things down into five and 10 shot groups, the best Five shot group was 1.0 MOA with an average five shot group size of 1.3 MOA. And if we break it down into 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 1.3 MOA with an average 10 shot group size of 1.7 MOA. And that's what I got. All right, before we get into the overall results, we're going to touch on something real quick. After I got back from the range, I took a closer look at the brass and noticed that there was a little bit of scarring on there, which I was a little bit surprised to see. I was able to find scarred brass from all the loads I shot through the Noveski. Obviously, the chamber wasn't as smooth as I would have expected, but I didn't think it was rough enough to cause uh, scarring. But at least it's not as bad as the brass from the 308 Jackal, but it's still not exactly something I expected to see out of a hand polished chamber. Anyway, getting to the overall results. Uh, this chart is organized by my AZ score, which is the maximum distance where the calculated group size would be the same width as a USPSA A zone. So the best group of the day was the IMI Razor Core that had an AZ score of 236 yards, and that was followed by the Federal 73 grain uh, burger OTM load with an AZ score of 175 yards, and that was followed by Winchester M855 with an AZ score of 156 yards. So to me, these, re these results are a bit surprising. Uh, the M855 did better than I expected, but these other two loads did not, uh, didn't do as good as I would have thought. 
And of course, this, may have, this barrel may have done better with a, a different load. Uh, and I'm certainly not a perfect shooter, so all these loads likely could have uh, been tightened up at least a little bit. Uh, but this is what I ended up with on the day. So uh, let's see how this compares to everything else that I've shot so far. All right, so the Noveski Rival 2 ends up in fifth place with an AZ score that is 40, 41 yards behind the Geisley and only nine yards ahead of the shot out Criterion Core Barrel. So yeah, for a stainless steel match barrel, I would have expected it to do quite a bit better. I was expecting somewhere in the top three uh, going into this, but this is what we ended up with. But of course, I could have done better with uh, different ammo or you know something else. Who knows? Anyway, here's a look at the best group from the Noveski barrel compared to the current leader, which is the Sons of the Gunworks SPR barrel. So this is a difference between an AZ score of 472 with the Sons barrel versus 236 with the Noveski. And it looks like quite a difference. Before moving on, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the content and found it useful, it would help me out a lot if you could tip the channel with a $2 super thanks so I can buy more ammo and equipment to help grow the channel. Thanks again. Let's get back to it. All right, so wrapping things up here, I thought the barrel had quite a few surprises. Everything forward of the chamber looked excellent. The rifling, the gas board, and the crown all looked phenomenal. However, the chamber and the barrel extension were not at all at the quality level I expected to see. The group started out okay. This is the first time I shot M855, but that group did better than I expected it to. Then, moving on to the Federal Gold Medal and I My Razor Core, I was really surprised I wasn't able to get better groups out of those loads. With how good the rifling and crown looked, I really thought that the things would have turned out a little bit differently. And then, there's the Scarred Brass, which I feel is excusable for something that's supposed to have a hand polished chamber. So, that's what I got for the Noveski Rival V2. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and make sure you're subscribed because I have a lot more content on the way. I'll see you next time. Later.